Hey everyone, this is James. Today let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch was released on the 3rd of March 2017, and it's on course to sell more units in the first 12 months than the Wii U sold in over 4 years. Due to popular demand, availability of the Switch was initially limited, but with most retail stores now stocking the console again, now could be a good time to pick one up ready for the holidays. Let's take a look and see what this hybrid console has to offer. The cost of the Switch accessories and lack of games were some of the biggest concerns on release. The console accessories are still quite pricey, with the Xbox One S and PS4 Slim often on sale cheaper than the Switch. The range of games, however, have vastly increased, with Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, FIFA 18, Skyrim and Doom just some of the great titles you can play right now. As the name suggests, the console could switch between various different play modes. I tend to use the Switch primarily in handheld mode. I love the fact I can now play FIFA 18 Ultimate Team on the go. The online community might be smaller than the Xbox and PlayStation, but it's still good fun. The Switch's 720p HD resolution may not sound all that impressive by today's standards, but it's still a good step up from the 480p display on the Wii U gamepad, and overall games look great on the 6.2 inch display. Without the Joy-Con controllers, it isn't that much bigger than my iPhone 7 Plus, and it's a fair bit smaller than an iPad mini. The screen on the Switch can scratch quite easily, so it's best to add a screen protector and use a carry case when possible. If you're out and about and don't have access to a TV, you can use the Switch in tabletop mode. Just slide off the Joy-Con controllers by pressing the small release buttons on the back, then flip out the kickstand. This mode is useful for when you don't want to hold the Switch for long periods of time, or if you and a friend want to play some multiplayer games. Using a single Joy-Con controller in multiplayer games can take some getting used to, especially if you have large hands. I found that adding the Joy-Con straps helped a little, but make sure to slide them on the right way. Otherwise, they can be really difficult to remove. It's worth noting that whilst the built-in kickstand works fine on stable surfaces, it's quite flimsy and often falls over on soft and uneven surfaces, so you might want to consider picking up a third-party stand. In handheld and tabletop mode, the Switch battery will last anywhere from 3 to 5 hours, depending on the games you play. If 3 hours of continuous Zelda playtime isn't enough, you can always plug in an external power bank, as the Switch supports USB-C charging. The Switch wouldn't be a true hybrid console if it didn't have a TV mode. Simply dock the Switch, detach the Joy-Cons and almost instantly is transformed from a 720p handheld into a 1080p home console. Games look fantastic in Full HD and upscale to 4K. The transition from docking and undocking the Switch works impressively well, as does instantly resuming games. Even after being on standby for hours, it only takes a few seconds to kick off from where you left off. You're not limited to using Joy-Con controllers separately in each hand. You do have the option of using a Joy-Con grip. This combines the Joy-Cons into a more traditional style controller. On first impressions, I thought this would be my go-to option, but I actually found myself going back to just using the Joy-Con separately, as this felt more natural. If you plan to play in TV mode for long periods of time and want larger buttons with more tactile feedback, you should consider spending a bit of money and picking up a Pro controller. The Joy-Con controllers may be small, but they have a large amount of tech crammed inside. Both have a gyroscope and accelerometer for motion control and HG rumble, which provides much more precise haptic feedback. The right Joy-Con has a few extras, with an NFC reader built into the analog stick for registering amiibos and an IR motion sensor camera that can detect the shape and distance of objects in front of it. Only a few games like 1-2 Switch make use of this right now, but I'm keen to see how many games incorporate this feature in future. One feature the controllers don't have is a headphone jack. This normally wouldn't be an issue if the Switch supported Bluetooth headphones, but as of right now, they don't. Well, not natively anyway. You still have a 3.5mm headphone jack on the console, but this is really only practical in handheld mode. There are some workarounds with USB wireless transmitters, but hopefully native Bluetooth support is on its way. Nintendo's user interface and online features have always appeared to be a step behind Xbox and PlayStation. Unfortunately, this doesn't change much with the Switch. On one hand, the interface is very clean, minimal, and displays only essential information. But on the other hand, features that should be really simple, such as adding an online friend, can be really cumbersome. Surely there's a better way than typing in a 12-digit friend code. I'm sure Nintendo will continue to release improvements though. Their online features will be completely overhauled in 2018, as they plan to roll out their Switch Online service. And at a cost of $20 a year, with a free classic game every month, 
this looks like it'll be one of the best value online gaming services. The Switch only has 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, which is really disappointing, especially when you consider Zelda alone is a 13 gigabyte download. Luckily for us, the console does support expansion via micro SD, and I can see this being an instant purchase for most users. Switch game cartridges are coated with denatonium benzonate. Why? Well, denatonium is the most bitter chemical compound. It's used as an additive that discourages accidental ingestion by making a substance taste so bad that you instantly want to spit it back out. Nice work, Nintendo. So, is the Nintendo Switch a gimmick? I don't think so. Nintendo has improved on the Wii U and its hybrid gaming niche. The console is an alternative to an Xbox One or PS4 but different enough that it can sit alongside either of these consoles. Whilst not as powerful, and maybe lacking in some home media features, it's certainly versatile, a portable and home console that provides a fun experience for multiplayer games and Nintendo exclusive titles. You'd be hard pushed to find a better portable console right now, and with the holidays coming, there should be some good deals to choose from. If you're looking to pick up a Switch, I'll leave a link in the description below for the console and accessories featured in this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's video and want to see more tech reviews like this, drop me a comment below or hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this and until next time, see ya.